might any of us have wanted. I think all of us want to get on with our work serving our clients and the larger community. What I had hoped for eight months ago, and what I still hope for, is an open conversation between our union representatives and the management of CSO about our unmet needs as employees and how we could and can collaboratively and creatively address these needs given the financial limitations of our employer. I'm Phil Wilson and I'm a clinician, fee-for-service clinician at Greenfield. Okay, and can you explain for those who might not know, what does it mean to be fee-for-service? Uh, fee-for-service means that you're not salaried, you get no vacation time, no sick time, um, you're eligible for health insurance but no other benefits, mm -hmm. and um, you're, you're paid per hour and you're, you're paid per billable hour and a billable hour might be $36 but for that time you also have to make telephone calls, you have to do a ton of paperwork, some of it very redundant and uh, tedious and it's uh, often paperwork that probably nobody looks at. Um, and the, the amount of time that you spend um, in addition to that billable hour is probably another hour or maybe even more. So you're making about $18 an hour. And for your workload, it doesn't sound like a very well, but, decent wage. You know, I've been in this profession for over 30 years. I'm 67 years old and I'm still making about the same as I was making when I started. We have a number of things that we've been sort of fighting for and to us they do not seem minimal to the agency. Um, the response has always been that they are not things that they can support us in um, and we're asking for just a, a what feels like a minimal increase in payment, no increase in productivity requirement, a small increase in mileage reimbursement, um, and a retirement benefit that the management gives to themselves but does not give to us as their frontline employees. You can't record while you're on the property, sir. Okay. Hi guys, how's it going? It's going well. How about you? Very well, thank you. Excellent. Are you guys part of the strike or? Well, we're not actually on strike, no. We're, we're with the nurses. Okay. Three oh one, three oh one. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Hey ladies, you guys are going up there. I understand. So that's definitely the CSO up there? Yeah. Do you guys have actual business or are you just going yeah. to Yeah, I'm dropping off the letter. Okay. Thank you. Association. Hi. And I'd like to drop this letter off for Karen Jeffers. Okay. I was wondering if she was here. She's not here. Okay. Is there somebody else I could speak with? In regards to? Um, letter of solidarity. I'd be happy to pass that on to the right person. Okay. Yeah. But no one's available that we could speak with? Not right now. Sorry. Okay. okay. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Appreciate it. Have a good day. You too. the senior co-chair of the bargaining unit at Bay State Franklin Medical Center and I sit on the board of directors for the Massachusetts Nurses Association but I work full-time as a bedside psych nurse right. full-time and you're here with some of your colleagues supporting the CSO workers that is correct mm -hmm. we are in solidarity with them at a hundred percent and you just read a letter and tried to deliver it uh, can you talk about who you were trying to deliver it to and what the letter said yes um, the letter essentially highlights all of the workers' struggles. That these these workers are working with some of the most vulnerable and at-risk uh, people in our Western Mass community. And they are living at poverty wages. Their working conditions are untenable. And they're trying to negotiate a fair contract. And the letter that I delivered was in support of that. That we understand as nurses that if the workers themselves are not being taken care of and are living in poverty and high stress and there's high turnover, 
then that there's no continuity of care for the, for these most vulnerable of our clients. You know, there was a time when, you know, whether it was a, a human service organization or a hospital, they the administration themselves would sit across the table with you and negotiate a contract. Now, in the last, I would say, 20 years, the trend is to hire big time law firms that specialize in union busting. The, the problem with that is that CSO is not a private, it's, it I mean it's not privately funded. This is an organization that gets its money from the state. And that money comes from taxpayers. So they're using taxpayer money to hire a big time law firm to bust this union. That's one of their tactics. And I say that that is completely unethical. And it's unethical that a CEO of a health and human service organi organization that stands up and says, I believe in helping vulnerable people, pays herself at least 10 times more than her workers and denies them the right for a fair contract. To me, I, 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 don't, I don't know how those two things go together. The most important message about going in that building was letting them know you are on watch. You are being watched and that SEIU 509 is not doing this alone. Yeah. The community is going to be is behind you, and that you cannot continue to behave like this. Yeah. So that's the message. Yeah. I want to thank you. I really want to thank you. It's an honor standing side by side with you, and do not give this up. I'll put them back if you need them.